Hello, everyone. Just going to give everybody a couple of minutes to join in here. Alrighty. Okay, well, hi everyone. Welcome to uh, Psycho 105. Make sure I say it right. Um, <clears throat> so today, if you haven't had a chance to sort of browse through our e-class yet, today is just going to be me going through all of the information that you have available to you now, and also giving you just a little bit of an introduction to me as an instructor. Um, and I have in the past done this as a pre-recorded video, but it kind of occurred to me that there's so little chance for you to get a feel for me as an instructor when we just do pre-recorded stuff. So I wanted to try and incorporate both, um, which I do try and do throughout the semester. So I am going to start actually by sharing my screen here. Uh, there we go. Make sure I share the right screen. Perfect. And then I want the chat and my videos over here. Perfect. <clears throat> All right. So on screen right now, I have our e class. But actually, before I hop over to e class, I'm going to start with the slides that I always use when I introduce myself to a new class. <clears throat> so you might have already found these on our e-class. There's a little section called day one introduction or something similar. Um, that's where you can find these if you so desire. Um, they're not anything special. I just wanna give you sort of a crash course on who your instructor is and then some of the basics for the course. So uh, I might've actually already skipped this part. It's a little bit important, but I'm Dr. Kimberly Campbell. Um, I might have had some of you already from Psych 104 last semester or earlier, because um, I think I saw a couple of familiar names. But just in case that's who I am, um, I'm going to take just a moment here to introduce myself. Um, as an undergraduate student, I didn't quite understand this part of sort of that first day of class where the instructor stands up and says who they are and what their education is. But now that I'm an instructor, I'm actually starting to figure it out, which is we push a lot in sciences for being critical about where information is coming from. So yeah, if I, I'm a source of information for this course. So I guess the question is, who am I and why should I share or why am I a reliable source of sharing information? So um, the basics of it, um, as I said, Dr. Campbell, I got a Bachelor of Science specifically in biology at Dalhousie University. Um, and so this means that my background was actually in biology before I switched over to psych. So I did a whole bunch of genetics and evolution stuff. I even did some research in that area um, before I switched over. Uh, and you can see there's a little bit of a gap. So I took some time off after I finished my undergrad degree. I took a whole five years in my degree because, uh, well, I started off in physics and then realized that I'm really bad at numbers. So I uh, ditched physics and I switched to bio. <clears throat> and then I worked for a year and a bit. I worked with the federal government. We did some uh, cleaning of lighthouse sites, which was really cool. And then I decided to go back to school. So I got my master's and my PhD at the University of Alberta in psychology. So I switched from doing sort of single cell organism genetics to doing behavior and communication in songbirds, which is quite the dramatic swing yet again. Um, but I just, I like to tell people a little bit of that background because when you're starting off, it kind of feels like there's this straight line that you have to follow. Um, and I definitely did not do that. So I'm a big proponent of, you know, sometimes things change directions and that's fine. Um, but that's 
the professional background of where my experiences come from and stuff like that. Um, I've also started doing a little bit of sort of me as a person outside of academia. Again, with the online learning thing, it's really hard to get a feel for a person as a person um, and not just some disembodied voice that's speaking over all of your lectures. So a little bit about me. I am an avid bird lover. I do research on birds. I have birds. Um, I give you a little bit of a warning later on because I do have three of them now. And anyone who has experience with birds knows that they can be uh, not quiet is a good way to put it. Um, so I have fairly good uh, filters set up so I can filter out most of it, but they do occasionally make appearances in either recordings or live lectures, depending on what suits their fancy, um, just so that you're aware. Um, I also absolutely love chocolate. I usually have some within my range of reach. Um, I will definitely bring the birds one day. Um, I specifically made sure that they went to bed early because they get into everything. So I wanted our first day to be calm. Um, but I've had, uh, I did a live class last semester, it was a stats class. And the yellow one, she came and she laid on my glasses for about a half hour. So I think that was distracting on both sides. <laughs> Um, but yes, they will absolutely make appearances. Um, what else? Oh, I do photography. I used to do sort of more hands-on artwork, but there's not a lot of time for that as a graduate student. So I switched over to photography to be a little bit creative. Um, I, as you've seen a couple of comments there, I have played Pokemon since I was a small child and continue to play the games avidly. So I'm very excited to be playing some of the new games. Uh, one just came out in a new one, possibly this month, though I'm bad with dates. Um, so I do have lots of other little hobbies as well. Um, oh, a couple of questions. Are the birds smart? Uh, yes and no. I actually teach classes on like learning and behavior, which should translate over to training, but I'm not very good at it, which is unfortunate. Um, the yellow one, Sheik, she is beautiful, but she is not smart. Um, I mostly pull her off of, like, she licks the ceiling fans, so she's not great. Um, Link, the green one, he's very smart, and uh, so they complement each other really well. One is really dumb and really pretty, and the other one is both pretty and smart, just to make us all jealous. Um, but I have a couple other pictures as well. Uh, yes, that was our intention for the, the Lincoln Sheik is Legend of Zelda. Um, we branched out into our naming scheme. Our other one, I just, I just got another bird, a pandemic quarantine bird, um, and his name is Starbuck. So yeah, a little, little bit nerdy, but that's stuff that's going to shine through throughout the lectures. I like using them as examples. Um, sometimes I'll tell stories that illustrate points, that sort of stuff, especially in our learning chapter, which is really exciting. Actually, we don't have a learning chapter in this class. Shoot, but I'll work it into personality, I'm sure. Um, okay, so, oh, I guess I did include a little bit more professional stuff. Um, so for research, things just to hop around a little bit, which you'll notice I do a lot of. Um, so I hinted that my undergraduate research was looking at single celled organisms. So specifically, I sequenced the DNA of single celled organisms that I had extracted from soil samples. And then I ran their genomes to determine what they were related to, which sounds really boring, but was also kind of cool. Um, so I did that for a probably two or three years. And then I switched over and I do learning and communication in black cap chickadees now. So broad areas of experience. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. And it's nice to start making connections. Um, so our chapter on learning, which we do have. Um, oh, yes, do that. Oh, wait. Um, oh dear, I lost my train of thought immediately. <coughs> Oh, learning. Learning with birds and language. Um, so the language chapter is kind of neat because I can start making that connection between what I teach about versus what I've actually done research on, which is really cool. 
Um, so I like kind of bringing in that personal touch just because A, it's a little bit more interesting than straight from the textbook, and B, it's easier to talk about what you do. Um, and then I did promise more bird pictures. So you've already met Link and Sheik, who are on the left here. Um, and then we have Starbuck, who's the new guy on the right. Uh, Link and Starbuck are both green cheeks, just different morphs. And then uh, Sheik, the yellow one, she's a sun conure, in case you're curious. Um, so I can usually keep them mostly out of the videos, but I do give people a heads up because if you've ever met birds, they are very loud. Um, I think sun conures can break like 90 decibels. So I try and avoid that as much as possible, but it's sometimes unavoidable, especially since her favorite perch is my microphone. Um, all right. And then the last little bit about me, um, I wanted to very briefly touch on my teaching philosophy. Um, and the reason that I do this and uh, sort of the way that I explain things is intentional. Um, and it's because I, I feel like you guys understand things better if I tell you why I do things, hence the little breakdown here. Um, but I always like to acknowledge that this whole online learning thing, even though we've now been doing it for a while, it's still new and weird and every class is set up slightly differently and stuff happens and things go wrong. Um, so I like acknowledging that up front because I know it can create a lot of anxiety with students. I have been doing this long enough so that I was involved in the first push to online. I was teaching a number of very large classes when we got bumped to online the first time, and I've done it ever since. Um, so if there's something that can go wrong, I have already experienced it, and um, we always find a way to work around it. So whether it's something like maybe the servers go down in the middle of exams, which may or may not have happened a couple of times, um, we always find a solution. So I let you guys know that it's gonna be um, a little bit flexible. I try and find good solutions for problems as they come up, um, but it's gonna be a learning curve and we're just gonna work together through whatever happens. But I keep up with that transparency where I let you guys know what's happening. If something happens, I'm gonna let you know as soon as I know a fix for it, how we're gonna fix it. So that is out there. Um, <clears throat> the next point is you may have noticed that I have possibly the most boring slides in existence. They are plain black text on a plain white background. Um, and I do this because I really push for my material to be as accessible as possible. Um, I've had students who maybe have issues with vision. Um, and you, if you have some vision issues, you might have realized that a lot of textbooks and specifically their figures are designed, and it seems almost intentionally to be hard to look at if you're colorblind. Um, so I do a lot of sort of adjusting and tweaking um, so that my slides are easy to read and high contrast, but I also try and go in and actually edit the textbook figures as well, just to make them a little bit less obnoxious. So stuff like that is happening in the background and there's a reason for it. So I'm just letting you guys know about that. Um, I'm also open for other uh, suggestions if there's something else I can add that helps with that. Um, someone had requested turning on the uh, for the, the transcripts for the video here, which is fantastic. Um, I actually have no idea how to do it unless someone requests it. Um, and I've tried like three or four different times to see if I can find the right spot and I still can't. So if that's something you'd like, just send the request and I'll acknowledge it immediately. Um, it's just a me problem where I can't find the button to turn it on all the time. Um, my other thing, because I get a lot of people who ask about like, how do I do well in this class? What should I be doing? What should I look for? And one of the best things you can do is actually making good use of the resources that are provided. So whether that's uh, reading the textbook, if you're a textbook person, or coming to these Zoom meetings, if you're someone who likes to ask questions and sort of chat back and forth. Um, I also like including videos and extra links. You'll notice as soon as you get into my lectures that I flag some slides just with an FYI, or I'll go off on a tangent 
And I'll preface it or follow it up with a statement that this is just for interest sake, I won't ask you about it. And I mean that. I'm never going to sort of tricky, sneaky test you on something I said you don't have to know. I just don't do that, at least not intentionally. Um, so I will sort of go off on tangents and tell little stories. And it seems kind of weird to do that, but it actually helps make connections and it makes the information easier to remember. So I try and do little bits of that, but I make you know, sort of, or make you aware of what isn't required. Um, there will be a Discord for this class. I actually just got an email from the department. We received uh, sort of two students who are going to be helping run sort of a question and answer period for this class. And they're gonna be setting up a Discord and also setting up two additional sort of one hour meeting times a week where you can come in and ask questions. Um, the issue is I was told about it this afternoon. So we haven't had a chance to set it up yet. But I will absolutely post that on our e-class and I will also make an announcement about it as soon as I have that link. Because um, I know a lot of students really like having access to a Discord. So I have two students. Um, they're not quite TAs, but they're almost TAs. Um, and I'll sort of give you their, their rundown um, as soon as we set it all up. But yes, that will absolutely be there. Um, I also have a general forum on our e-class page, and I'll point that out when we hop back to it. Um, and that's basically just a free-for-all where you can start posting questions about things for the class, especially if you think someone else might have the same question. Um, just sort of giving us a way of getting those questions answered where they're visible. Um, so myself, our TAs might actually post um, on the general forum if we get a lot of the same questions, just so everybody can see it. Um, but just in these larger classes, there's a lot of information and it can take a little while to get back to people. So we do a lot of different things. Um, yes, so we do also have TAs. So it's going to be kind of a weird setup. Um, like I said, this just happened today. So there's me, the instructor. We then have two TAs. We have uh, Sarah and Irfan whose information is up on our e-class and in our syllabus already. And then we have two students who are coming in. I believe they're Gerleen and Daniela. Um, and that's just from a brief email I saw. I'm also very bad at names, but I'll make sure I give you their information as well. Um, so we're gonna have me, two TAs, and then two sort of assistants. Um, Oh, and then the next thing, uh, question was, do we need to review Psych 104? No, I'm basically gonna cover what I think is most important from 104, which if you've done 104 recently, you'll notice that our first chapter is a direct carryover from 104, where we talk about methods and a little bit of ethics and psychology in general. Um, and that's gonna be the review that you need to get started in the course. But other than that, there's, um, it's gonna be all new information that doesn't necessarily build on what you've done previously. Uh, sure, I get all of these. Um, and then another question about Top Hat. Um, so Top Hat is just the textbook this semester. Um, I ran into a bunch of issues trying to get stuff done through Top Hat separately and then poured it back over and I, did not want to do that again this semester. So I'm doing uh, my own quizzes on E-Class, which I'll point out when we hop back over to them. Um, okay. Uh, is there a break during class? Um, we're gonna finish up today. I'll probably only talk for about 50 minutes um, and then we'll be done. So, the lectures are all sort of pre-recorded and I specifically split them out into sort of like 10 to half hour videos um, based on content. And that way you can sort of watch as much or as little as you want at a time. Um, so I'm also, I don't think I mentioned this, again, thoughts popping up. I'm also recording my, uh, my audio and my screen for this. So you guys will have a chance to come back and re-watch this lecture if you so choose. Um, I just know that there's a lot of students switching into and out of classes. So I want them to be able to see this later on. Um, okay, I'm just sorry. 
sorry, there's a whole bunch of questions here. Okay, so uh, some 105 classes will use the Passer Frontiers and Applications text. Um, actually, I have a copy of that one somewhere. Somewhere, oh, there it is. Looks something like this. Um, I haven't used that textbook in about a year. Um, so you can continue using that if you'd like. It's just not going to overlap entirely with the content. Um, I'm using the top hat, the link and everything is on our e-class for that. Um, okay, let me make sure I get all of these. So when I'm choosing content to cover, I'm going to focus mainly in on stuff that's covered both in the textbook and in the lecture. So when it comes to exams, I'm going to look at, okay, what concepts were the most important from this chapter? And that's kind of the same stance that I take when I'm actually designing my lectures. So I'm going to sit down, I'm going to read through the chapter, and I'm going to figure out what concepts are most important to teach about. So there's a lot of overlap between the two. There's going to be a little bit of um, potential for, say, an example that's used in the text that I don't use in lecture or vice versa. Um, but as long as you know the content, you'll be able to figure it out. Um, yes, there are practice questions. So there's a bunch of different aspects for that. So there are practice, uh, practice exams available on eClass. Those are already up. Um, there are also going to be chapter quizzes, which are sort of a lower impact way to practice questions like those that you'll see on the exams. So the first of the chapter quizzes are up as well already. Um, so those are all available. The quizzes are not timed, no. Um, and I'll, I'll show you where those are and the descriptions for that. Those are open book. You can start them whenever, um, and then you can sort of submit them yourself whenever, or they will auto submit on the day of our midterm that tests that content. So, <clears throat> um, so if you want to use the textbook for this course, then you can purchase Top Hat. You can also get by in the class without it if you're not a textbook person. So it's your own preference for it. Some people are really into textbooks, some people are not. Um, okay, and then one more. So there's, uh, is the written assignment like an essay? Um, it's going to be much shorter than a proper essay. So think about reading an article and giving me one to two pages of an explanation of that article. But there will be more details coming. Uh, okay. Um, so someone was asking, can we use the other textbook? You, there's nothing against you using that textbook. Just be aware that it doesn't necessarily cover the same topics. Um, uh, and then the practice questions are going to be about the same level as what you see on the final. Um, I do include a couple of sort of challenge questions as well as a couple of easier questions on the final. Um, but on average, they're going to be about the same. Uh, perfect. Uh, yeah, so if you're willing to do sort of some of the legwork, you can use just the lectures. Um, as long as the lectures make sense to you, you can do just fine in the class. Um, so on average, I'll see uh, averages somewhere around 75 to 78 in this class, a little bit higher with online learning, also partially because I use open book tests, um, but that's usually where stuff sits. Okay, I'm going to keep going, otherwise we will be here all night. Um, if you've been in one of my classes, you have seen this before, um, but I always do sort of a brief aside about extra information that I feel is very much assumed in academia, but no one actually takes the time to teach. Um, and that's because I was an undergrad student and had no idea what any of this stuff was. So 
Uh, I'm going to do a sort of brief aside about how do you actually talk to people in academia, because there are some instructors who are very um, sort of picky about how they're addressed. I am less so, um, but this is just sort of a way to avoid some academic faux pas. Um, so typically, when dealing with academics, you're going to be using one of three different titles. Uh, doctor is going to be a safe one for someone who has a PhD or an MD, depending on what area you're in. Um, we typically encounter PhDs in academia. Um, so doctor, if you see that they have gotten themselves a PhD, would be a safe bet. Um, professor is going to be someone, typically a doctor, who has specifically been hired as a professor. So professor is a job title. So if you encounter someone who's been hired as a professor, you could technically call them doctor their last name or professor their last name. You just want to check what their preferences. Um, and then the last one is instructor. And so this is another job title, but it's for someone who isn't a professor. They were hired as an instructor, um, but they're teaching a course. So for example, I am a sessional instructor, that's my title. So for me, I have a PhD, so you could go with Dr. Campbell, or you could go with instructor or instructor Campbell because that's my technical title. Um, the other sort of hint that you can use is if you send someone an email, um, you would start with the sort of the most formal example. So for me, you could go with Dr. Campbell um, and then look at how they respond to your email. Sometimes they'll use it to make a subtle correction. Maybe they prefer professor over doctor. So you'd look at how they sign off their email. Um, so if you say write an email to me and you say, hey, Miss Campbell, and I write back and I sign off Dr. Campbell, that's like a subtle correction that like mm, close but not quite. Um, I've seen some people get really nitpicky about it, me, not so much. Um, for my emails, what you'll get back from me is usually if you use the correct title, I'll just sign it with my first name. So I'll say Kimberly. And that's me saying that I acknowledge that you've sent me sort of the proper name, um, but I'm also okay with you addressing me by my first name. And that's sort of one of those little cheats in academia that people don't necessarily tell you, but an email signature is usually somebody telling you what they're okay with you calling them. Um, and as soon as I learned that, that made it so much easier to talk to academics and professionals and things like that. So a nice little life hack. Um, oh, I also included, if you're not a written person, if you prefer visuals, I did some Venn diagrams, which I also enjoy. So our biggest circle is people who have PhDs, so you could call them doctor. Um, and within that group, professors are almost exclusively going to also be doctors. So you would see what they prefer, but either is usually safe. Um, and then instructors can be doctors, but don't have to be. So an instructor might be somebody with an MSc, they got a master's, um, or maybe they're a PhD candidate and they're on their way to getting a PhD. So you could call them instructor as an official title, even if they haven't yet gotten their doctorate. So just a little quick breakdown of that. And then I included an example from my, oh, I, and somebody was asking about the little pink dot. That's where I fall, is I am technically an instructor and also a doctor, so both are valid. Um, and then for the example, I also have my supervisor from my master's and PhD. This is Dr. Sturdy. Um, and so he has his PhD, hence Dr. Sturdy, um, but he's also a professor in the Faculty of Science, so we could also call him Professor Sturdy. Both would be acceptable. Um, so that's just my little uh, caveat um, of information. Yeah, so yeah, there's just a, little, a couple of clarifications about the lecture versus textbook. It's mostly going to be overlap. Um, I'm just including some more broad wording because every once in a while I'll use something like an example that you might have seen in the text, but not in lecture, or an example from lecture, but not in text. Um, they're mostly going to complement each other, but I always include the possibility for both just 
because there might be extra info, um, but you should be fine with sort of one or the other. Um, okay, so our next thing is the stuff about this course specifically. Um, so E-Class, which if you made it here, you found our E-Class page, which includes the link to our Zoom meetings as well as everything else for this course. So E-Class is our main source of information. If you have questions, absolutely go to E-Class first. I try and make things very uh, clear and logical as to where they'll be located uh, through lots and lots of trial and error. Um, you might actually notice that some of the information is on there multiple times, and that's because I like to put the information anywhere that it makes sense to be, um, and that way everyone's going to find it when they go looking, hopefully. Um, so we have lots of general information. That's where you can find the syllabus, which we'll take a look at in a minute. There's also some announcements. Um, so you are automatically, when you join the class, subscribed to that announcements forum. And that means that if I make an announcement for the class, it's going to automatically send you an email. So if I have to change a due date or I want to give you guys a reminder of something that's coming up, it's going to go out through those announcements. So just make sure that you keep an eye on your U of A emails um, and that's going to be where that information comes in. I also have some frequently asked questions. If I get the same question over and over again, I tend to add it to that area. Um, or it might just go into the general forum, which is another forum right by the announcements that serves the same purpose. You can subscribe to that one if you want. You aren't automatically subscribed because it can get kind of annoying if you're not interested. Um, but you have the option if you wanted to see what other people are asking. Um, that's where I'm also going to put our course assessments and all of the information you need on it, links to our examinations, as well as our lecture videos and the slides that go along with it. And I'll point out the stuff for chapter two um, when we hop back over to that. Um, and so you might have already figured out, but we have asynchronous lectures. So I still show up for the Zoom meetings every week but I typically just stick around as long as people have questions. I find that a lot of people have commitments and they'd like to be able to watch stuff at their convenience. So I post everything on uh, YouTube and then link on eClass so that you can watch it whenever. Um, and so I'll pre-record those. I'll make sure that they're posted in time for the Thursday lecture class, if not earlier. Um, and then you can watch that and actually come into these Zooms and ask questions if you have any. Um, I'm also going to post the slides for that on eClass as both PowerPoint and PDF, because um, some students have preference for either. Um, uh, so the quizzes will be multiple choice, eventually some true false and fill in the blank if I can make them work. Um, for the first one, it's just multiple choice. Um, and then the exams, the midterm and final, will have uh, written answers as well as multiple choice. Um, and all of those specifics are listed in the e-class descriptions for them. Uh, yes, so the chapter quizzes are gonna open up as the information is available for those uh, chapters. Um, Okay, so let me stay on top of these. Okay, so yeah, so on Thursdays, I'm not doing like a live lecture where I sit here and go through the slides kind of like I am right now. Um, I'm gonna do that separately, uh, mostly because it's really hard for me to talk for three hours uninterrupted with three birds in the house. Um, so I can record in small chunks and post it for you to watch. If you wanna watch it during the sort of lecture period, so start at 5.30 and finish when it's done, you are more than welcome to do that, um, but I'm gonna post them early so you have time to kind of watch them whenever works for you. But I will be here to answer questions if you have any questions. Um, and for written questions, my approach to short answer questions is look at how many marks it's worth. One mark is usually for you to make one statement or one point. Um, so I have some short answer questions where you can get full marks with as little as say four words or five words. Um, you can write a little bit more, but it isn't necessarily required. 
Um, so we can sort of talk about those as we get closer to those assessments. But um, as long as you can make a point that answers every aspect of that question, you get the marks for that question. Um, okay. Uh, Um, and yeah, so I'm going to hop over and show you what uh, Top Hat looks like. I also have a tab open for that, so we'll do that in just a minute. Um, for the chapter quizzes, they're not timed, so I open them as soon as we start a topic, um, and then they're not due until the midterm that tests that topic. So our first midterm is on January 27th. So you have until January 27th to complete uh, the chapter two quiz. Um, and then next week, I'll open up the chapter nine quiz. And then the week after, I'll open the chapter 10 quiz. And then all three of them will be open until the day of our midterm. So you can work on them all the way up until the midterm. Again, trying to introduce some flexibility with students doing online classes. Um, oh, and then the recordings are going to go up anywhere between, say, a couple of days early, but bare minimum, at least, they will be on eClass in time for the lecture to start, the sort of lecture time. So by 530, they will be there unless something goes wrong with my equipment. Um, so if I have them finished early, I'm not going to sit on them. I'm just going to post them for you guys to go through. Um, I am not on campus right now. Well, none of us are on campus right now. We're stuck online for quite a while. Um, I don't even have an office this year, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, I do teach a couple of in-person classes, theoretically, if we go back to in-person, but I'm currently not on campus at all. Um, I do schedule sort of one-on-one -on -one Zooms if people want to do something like that, um, but that's absolutely possible. Uh, okay, and then, yeah, so you don't have to submit the quizzes until the midterm, um, and they're actually set up to auto submit, so as long as you save your responses, it will submit for you. You will probably just feel better in your soul to submit it yourself manually beforehand, um, but I set it up to auto submit just in case. Because um, I'm used to, again, stuff goes wrong. Um, so you can open up the quizzes, you can answer some questions, you can close it down, you can come back the next day, answer some more questions, close it down. Um, so it's basically there to be as flexible as possible. So my encouragement would be that maybe while you're reading that chapter or while you're going through the lecture for that chapter, you sort of have an idea of what questions you need to answer for that chapter. Um, Oh, and then, um, so this class, our 105, is specifically an online course. Um, there's no way that we can do sort of 300 plus students in a room. They don't have rooms big enough. So this class is always going to be online. Um, I have some much smaller courses that are tentatively going to be moved back in person, um, but that's all up to the university say so. Um, so we get to sit and wait. Um, and typically when you guys get an email from the university saying what's happening, that's when we get the same email that lets us know what we're doing. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out as the semester goes on. Um, but it won't have any effect on the content for this course. Everything's on eClass and it's not going to change. Um, oh, I leave my lecture videos up. So once I've posted it, it's going to be up sort of for the rest of the semester. Um, I typically don't even take them down after the semester. Um, so if you needed to check something, that's gonna be there. Yeah. Okay, uh, and then another backtracking. Um, so lecture time is the same time as the office hour. Yeah, so I'm doing the pre-recorded lectures. So you can watch those whenever. If you wanna watch them during class time, that's fine. Um, I'm just going to be sitting in a Zoom room like this one every week in case people have questions. So I'm gonna show up at, um, actually, I have a slide for that. I'll hop into 
uh, this Zoom meeting uh, at 5.30, and then I'll stick around for however long students are here with questions. I always set it as I'll be here for a minimum of 15 minutes. Um, and the reason for that is I've had sort of one hour blocks and had no students come. So I've had to sit for an hour by myself in an empty Zoom call. So I now specify that I'll stick around for 15 minutes. Um, if we have a full room and there's lots of questions and we have a great discussion going, I'll stick around for the whole class period. I specifically book off this whole window just in case. So if we have lots to talk about, I'll stick around. Um, but I always say uh, sort of minimum 15 minutes so I'm not stuck here alone. Um, and yeah, so we can have questions about content, uh, course topics in general, science, whatever. Um, and so if you watch the videos in advance, you can ask questions or you can ask questions about the previous week or upcoming weeks, whatever. It's very free form. Um, I do not do review ses sessions close to the exam simply because everything's recorded. So if you needed to go back over a concept, it's really easy to hop back to that lecture and watch it again. Um, and then if you have questions beyond that, if you want more clarification, I can absolutely go over it in more detail in one of these meetings, or if you want uh, over email or on one of the forums, um, I can absolutely go through stuff if it's not quite clicking for you. Um, okay. All right. Okay, so that is it for the slides. Uh, what I am going to do now is actually hop over to, um, I'm not even going to do the E-class first, I'm going to do our syllabus first. We've covered a lot of this information already just with questions, um, but I will touch on this stuff here. Because um, I had someone asking about sort of the exams again, but I'll get to that on this document in just a moment here. Um, so this information is the same as what's on our e-class in the background there. I just copied this over. Um, and so this is our information as to where and when and how we can meet. Um, and then the links for me, if you want to send an email to me or to our two teaching assistants, those are there. Um, you might notice that I have multiple email addresses that will come up. There's also sort of the default U of A one. So if you um, sort of type in my name, it might tell you to use like KI6 at U Alberta. It's the exact same account. So there's no right or wrong answer there. Um, I just mentioned that because I want you to make sure that it is me, Kim Campbell, and not the other Kim Campbell that's on campus. Um, we have the former Prime Minister of Canada um, working at the Leadership College, and her name occasionally comes up before mine. So um, double check that the picture that comes up when you click on something in the email section uh, is for me. Because every once in a while she gets emails asking about my classes, and every once in a while I get emails for her that are asking about uh, different political events. Uh, so it happens. Uh, okay, um, so we talked about our lectures, we talked about our live meetings. Um, I'm going to skip through most of this. I would encourage if you haven't sat down and read a syllabus before to actually read through all of the sections here. There's a lot of really useful information, things like links directly to the textbook. Um, whether you want to get it through the uh, bookstore or through Top Hat directly, links are there, instructions on how to do that are there, um, help links are all there, um, and then the join code for our course is all there as well. And then this information, again, is also in our e-class on a separate tab for the textbook, because I like to put stuff in multiple places. Um, we have our topic list. So we do a pretty good job sticking with this. Um, towards the bottom here, we have sort of um, 16 uh, and then 16 and 14 and then 14 on its own. So we might cover everything for 16 that first week. We might cover only 16 in that or in two weeks and then 14 is in the last week. Stuff might move a little bit, but I always make sure that I write a very clear description in E-Class that'll let you know sort of how much I'm intending for you to be watching for each lecture period. And then I just make sure that it would fit into the standard three hours a week that we get. 
Um, okay, so scrolling down to our different components for, so I can go into some detail on these. So we're gonna end up having two midterms. Uh, we have a written assignment, which is gonna be coming up later on in the semester. The way that I've started doing this is I introduce the written assignment the day after our first midterm, just so that you get a chance to sort of settle into the class and get a feel for how everything works. Um, and then I give you the first, uh, the, I give you the written assignment, and then you have until almost the end of the semester to do it. Um, it's not intended to take that long. It's something that you could do in an afternoon, but um, I give you lots of time to make it work with your schedule. So details for that will come out a little bit later on. Um, it's going to be fairly short. I don't have the specifics worked out on it yet, um, but you can expect something like reading and critically thinking about a study and giving me a one to two page summary or explanation or critical evaluation of that study. So it's meant to be very short, um, like I said, something you could do in an afternoon um, and not needing to take a ton of time. Um, there are going to be chapter quizzes, one per chapter. We already kind of touched on those where I'm gonna uh, open those up as we get to topics. And then they're gonna be due when I'm testing you on those topics. Um, and then research participation, I'm gonna point that out. I'm not actually technically involved in research participation at all, um, but it is a component for the course. And I'm gonna show you where the links are so that um, Dr. Lynch has all of the description on how research participation works. So we'll point to that in a moment here. Uh, and then the final exam at the very end of the semester. And because this is still technically an evening class, our final exam is held within the last lecture period of the semester. So it's supposed to be April 7th, provided nothing happens strangely this semester. Um, I always include that caveat because since we moved to online, there's stuff that's supposed to be certain that isn't necessarily. Um, okay. So we already talked about the chapter quizzes. They're going to um, basically be sort of multiple choice, fill in the blank type questions um, based on the topics from the chapter. You can do them while you're reading or while you're watching the lectures. You should be able to do it with either. Um, uh, and then the due dates for all of those are listed here. Um, you might have noticed already in the topic list that the order of the chapters isn't in numerical order. And that's just because this is sort of the flow that I find works best. So just don't be too confused. We're going to do 2, 9, 10, then 4, 13, and 12, and then 16, 14, and 15, just to make it all complicated. Um, okay, and then for the specifics on the midterms, um, even though this is a three hour window for classes, I think that anything longer than say an hour or two is just absurd. So the midterms are gonna be an hour each. Um, they're gonna be mostly multiple choice questions. If I can, I'm gonna try and work in a couple of fill in the blank um, and some short answer questions. Um, they are non-cumulative. So the way that that's going to work is that the first midterm is going to test the first three chapters that we cover. The second midterm is then going to test the next three chapters that we cover. And then the final exam is going to be longer. It's going to be very similar in format to the midterms, but twice as long. And it's going to be cumulative. So it's going to be about a 70-30 split where 70% of the questions are gonna come from the last three chapters that you haven't been tested on yet. And then the remaining 30% will be stuff that kind of combines the first six chapters. So you'll only really have to know sort of the big concepts from the early topics um, or things that connect nicely between concepts. Um, I, let me double check. So for the midterms, they have, oh, that's the wrong class. Go to the right class. There we go. Uh, so for the midterms, it's set right now at 
45 multiple choice, five fill in the blank, and five short answer questions. So that might shift slightly as we get closer to it, depending on whether or not I can get the short answer or the, sorry, the fill in the blanks working. Um, but that's the main plan for now. If I do switch it, I'll do it at least a week in advance of the exam so you know what's coming. Um, but all that I would probably do is just take those five questions and swap them back to multiple choice. Um, but that's what's there. Um, and so this is visible to you guys on eClass already. So you can already see the setup for our midterms, uh, midterm two, and then the final exam as well at the bottom with the same breakdown. Uh, yes, the chapter quizzes are going to show your mark right after you turn it in. Um, I'm going to have uh, sort of pools of questions that will draw for each student. So not everyone's going to have the same questions um, once we get into sort of the bigger chapters. The first chapter, they're going to be pretty much identical. Um, but I will eventually get to pools of questions that I can pull from. So not everyone has the same questions. Um, because people can turn in their exam or their uh, quizzes sort of whenever, I'm not going to be showing the quizzes themselves and the correct answers right off the bat. Um, so you can email and ask about a particular question. So if you wanted to write and say, hey, I took this quiz. I wasn't sure about this question. I think this was the right answer. I'll let you know if you were on the right track or not. Um, but just to try and encourage everyone to do the quizzes themselves, I'm not going to give the answers out right away. Um, you only get one try for the quizzes. Uh, no, you will not get them before the midterm. You get them the day after the midterm um, because they're due on midnight on the day that the uh, midterm happens. Uh, um, yes, yes, you get the marks right away. Um, okay. So I think so. Did the exams? The practice exams are here as well for those who were curious earlier. Um, so you can click through those. The practice exams have unlimited tries. They're just there to let you sort of practice with what's uh, available. Um, and you can go through those. Just make sure that your system works with eClass. If you haven't done exams through eClass before, it's nice to just test it out and see how it works so that you're not stressing out on the exam itself. So those are all available there. Um, the chapter quizzes are available under the tab for chapter quizzes. Um, and that includes sort of the due date on it is here. Um, it's going to be 10 multiple choice questions. Um, so you can access that now. Um, uh, textbook information, same as what was in our syllabus, is here as well. Uh, let me see, what else did I want to touch on? Oh, I do want to very briefly show you the research participation. I have some questions building up, but I'll get to those in just a moment here. Um, so this is from Dr. Carleen Lynch. So Dr. Lynch is our research participation coordinator. Um, and this is going to be all of the information that you need for research participation. So I believe she's also included videos and uh, handouts and slides and everything that you need to figure out how research participation works. Um, once you go through that, um, once you test it out um, and sort of watch through all of our stuff, if you still have questions, make sure that you send an email to Dr. Lynch because I don't have access to her system. So I actually can't answer any questions on it because I honestly don't know. Um, so she's going to be your resource for everything to do with research participation. So that is all there. Um, what else? Oh, and then I was going to show you. Um, this is sort of our first week's information. So I've broken down our chapter two lecture into five separate videos. These are the slides that go along with those. And then you can watch those sort of one after another or separately, however you'd like. Um, and then I'm going to be putting our slides as well as the video of the recording of this meeting um, on there as well, just so that you can come back and look at it if you need to. Um, and then as time goes on, I'll be adding into the uh, other weeks. Um, so you'll be able to find those as those topics come up in our schedule. Uh, okay, 
think I got across what I was intending to say. So let's just come over here. Um, so the textbook is a recommendation, not a requirement. Um, if you use textbooks, it's a really good textbook to use. If you're not going to read a textbook, then maybe it's not for you. Um, but yeah, no, it's just we're going to be using it to base all of the lectures on. Um, and I will be pulling questions from the textbook based on what we talk about in class. Um, for the uh, examinations, those the grades will be released once they're marked. Um, when anything includes a written component, it has to be manually graded. So the grades won't show up until it's been graded. Um, so that typically we aim to have it back in about a week. Um, again, that's sort of dependent upon whatever happens behind the scenes. Um, I had one of my TAs last year out with COVID for a couple of weeks. So grading was a little bit slower, um, but fingers crossed everything goes well and we should have stuff back within a week. Um, Uh, for students who have accommodations, you'll have to register through Clockwork um, which exams you want those accommodations to apply to. Um, and then one week in advance of each of the examinations, I get an email from accommodations resources and they tell me uh, this student um, gets this particular amount of time and I make those adjustments. So you have to register in advance. Um, I would highly recommend registering for all three exams starting today, um, just so that you don't forget, because if you miss that deadline, then they can't be applied. Um, okay. Uh, okay, and so we figured out the practice is unlimited, yes. Uh, so you can complete chapter two whenever. Um, it's available right now. The idea is that you would do it this week. Um, and then be ready for a new chapter next week. But again, I like some flexibility. So nothing is hard due until the first midterm. So if you're frantically trying to work on stuff in other classes this week and you need to do it next week, that's perfectly fine. As long as you know how much time you're gonna need to get through it and you don't leave yourself too crammed at the end, you can do it anytime before that first midterm. Um, okay, again, so Top Hat is just for the textbook. Our uh, class, our, our chapter quizzes are what's available on eClass there. Um, so you can already see the chapter quizzes. Um, if you end up getting sick, um, just let me know. So with a lot of stuff, so actually I don't think I covered that specific part, um, but if we scroll down to what happens if you have to miss something, for things like assignments or uh, chapter quizzes, something where it's, you know, we have lots of time and then there's a deadline. Um, if you let me know in advance, we can usually find a better time for something. So maybe you get sick or something's going on at home or whatever. You need an extra 24 hours or whatever you need. Um, I can make that work. I'm usually able to be a lot more flexible if you can let me know in advance of a deadline. Um, after the fact, if you sort of miss a deadline, you have 24 hours to um, sort of reach out and request a deferral for one of the valid reasons for needing a deferral. Um, again, just it's better to do it in advance. Um, and then we can figure that out. For the midterms, because it's a pretty large class, um, I don't do uh, rewrites of midterms because it ends up slowing down everybody else getting their grades and I have to kind of redo some of the questions and stuff like that. It doesn't quite work. Um, and especially lately with how many students end up sort of having to miss midterms, I physically cannot accommodate all of them. So for missing midterms, what we do is we defer the wait to the final exam. So you let me know uh, either in advance or within 24 hours what's going on. I'll let you know that we'll sort of shift some weight around and then you don't have to write the midterm, we'll just um, move the weight to the final. Um, and then that way, because the final exam tests everything through the course, so it's going to be sort of a more representative setup. 
Um, and all of that information is there. The final exam is a little bit different and that's because final exams are run through the faculty, not through sort of the department or the instructor. So if you have to miss a final exam, there's an actual official process to request a deferral. Um, so that's gonna depend on which faculty you're in. So if you're in the faculty of arts, you're gonna contact the Faculty of Arts and submit their sort of form for requesting a deferral. If you're in science, you go to the sciences and so on. Um, so if you run into that situation, just let me know and I can usually point you in the right way. Um, there's also links here that give you some information on how that works. Um, so that should all be in the syllabus for you. Um, okay, and I think I think I covered all of the questions that are there. Okay, perfect. All right, um, and then yeah, like I said before, if you haven't read through a syllabus all the way through, I would recommend doing so. There's a lot of really useful links and stuff here. So I would definitely take a look at some of that stuff. So lots of resources, lots of links to other places, what you should do, what you need to know about, all of this stuff, it's all really useful. And it's all there. Um, and so if you have any questions after reading through the syllabus, I am happy to answer those. Um, but I think that's okay. So that's the syllabus. We covered e class and where stuff is linked to. Um, uh, I, I don't know if I pointed this out earlier. That's the general forum that I mentioned before. So if you have questions that you think other people might want to know the answers to, that is a great spot to submit them. And then the TAs and myself will be taking a look at that. Um, and yeah, so that's the syllabus, our announcements, uh, linked to Top Hat directly. Um, everything should be there. But um, I think that is everything I wanted to say. Um, does anybody have any questions? Is there anything I missed? Anything we need to go back over? So I have a, uh, sorry, so I have a one question. So the top head question is similar to chapter quizzes or is it slightly difficult? Oh, I was going to show Top Hat, wasn't I? Um, so the Top Hat has some integrated questions that are there for you to practice with. Um, they're not for marks or anything like that. Um, I'm not quite positive what it looks like from your end, um, but these are set up as review, which means that you can work through them, but they're not assignments. So if we click over, um, if you've seen Top Hat before, this is what it looks like. Each module is a chapter. So module two is our chapter two. Um, so I'm going in here to our reading assignment, which is the textbook readings. Um, and then this is what makes Top Hat really useful is they have lots of diagrams and sort of interactive videos and then questions that make you think about what you've just read or watched. Um, but these questions aren't specifically for marks. They're just there to help you practice. Um, some of the questions that are on Top Hat are similar, but not all of them. So some of these are just opinion questions. I don't really use those for the exams unless it's a written question. Um, there are some, say, multiple choice questions that are kind of the same shape as what I would be using. Um, so there is some overlap there. Um, I don't know that it specifically has an ISBN. Um, just because it's a digital text. Um, but if you go to either our eClass page or the syllabus, there's links to either the bookstore, uh, sort of the campus bookstore, or Top Hat directly as to where you can get it. Um, for the chapter quiz, do we have to finish in like, like for chapter two, can we come back to later on? Like we can do like, one, two, three, and then do four, five, six later on? Yep, absolutely. As long as you don't submit. Um, if you submit, there's, then it's submitted permanently. But if you just save your answers and then close it, it's there when you come back. Um, and once you're in it, it's actually nice and easy to see that. Um, just 
to sort of help yourself understand what's going on, if you actually hop into, say, the midterm one practice quiz, that's going to look very similar because it's the same uh, behind the scenes setup as the chapter quizzes. So it'll let you see what I mean by save versus submit, um, which are very distinct buttons. I made sure of that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so you can go in and play around in a sort of low risk scenario. And for the written assignment, it's like the sort of like an essay, but shorter version. Yeah, so I have two different ways that I typically structure the uh, written question or sort of the written assignment. Um, and it just depends on how the semester is progressing and uh, also the volume of the class. But I'll either have you read a scientific paper and sort of write a free form critique of it, um, sort of one page ish, um, or I'll give you a paper and ask you to answer some questions about it. Um, so those are my two options that I typically go with. Um, and I'll make sure I decide by by the first midterm, um, but whichever one I go with, it's basically going to get you to read a single paper um, and then write one to two pages. So it's intended to be very, very short. So is there like a word limit or just one page? Just a page limit um, with the intent of uh, just get the information across. Don't try to fill the page. Just make sure you answer the questions or cover what's asked. Okay, so even though it's like an essay, there will be a question that is associated with it. Yep, yeah, and I actually do a separate breakdown. Um, so I'll do another video when we get a little bit closer, um, along with like an actual PowerPoint um, describing what to expect for that assignment. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I do give a lot more information as time goes on. I just like to let students know that it's not intended to be like a 20 page paper or something ridiculous. Um, it's just nice and short, something that'll take you a couple of hours. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Awesome. Uh, 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 there is not going to be a Zoom specific for research participation. There's already existing videos in that section I was pointing out. Um, so those videos cover what you need to do, where you need to go, what the site looks like, and everything like that. Um, so it includes all the information that Carleen used to do when we were in person, um, just through a video recording. Um, and so the midterms are going to be based on textbook and lecture, and there's a lot of overlap between the two because I will choose to lecture about the stuff that's important in the textbook, and I also choose to ask questions about what's important in the textbook. <clears throat> and I believe if you go to Top Hat when you're um, going through the sign up process, I think they have an option to do a two week trial. So if you're not certain if you're going to benefit from the textbook, you have that option of trying it out for two weeks and seeing if it adds anything. And then if you find that you're doing fantastic just with the lecture portion of it, then you don't have to worry about it. Um, so you can kind of test it out and get a feel for it. I know some people absolutely love textbooks, and this is a really good one, um, but some people just don't like textbooks. I was definitely one of those students uh, until my master's. I had no idea how to read a textbook, so I use them to keep my desk level. Um, so not necessarily a benefit if that's all you're using them for. I think that was all of the questions there. Um, so, hey, Dr. Campbell, sorry, I have a question too. Um, so, I'm a full time teacher, and I took the class because I could I could do it five thirty. But all the tests say that they're nine a.m. to six thirty, and I I'm coaching teams every day, so I won't be able to write those unless I take a day off of teaching. Is there any uh, chance I can write them during class time? So. The exams are, that's not the right tab here. There we go. Um, so the exams are only 60 minutes long and you can write any time between 9 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. So I set it up so that you'd be able to write during the first hour of class. So 
uh, in the past, when I've done it sort of synchronously, I've had students write from 5.30 to 6.30, which is the class window. Um, and I've just sort of moved it so that you can write anytime. Uh, I also have accommodations to, to write for double time. We can talk about this another time if, if it's not okay to talk about right now. <laughs> well, it it but, doesn't matter to me. Um, so that would just be that the ending stays in the same spot and it would push back. Unless that specifically doesn't work, then that's something I'm usually just open to adjusting yeah, on a one-off basis. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, because I I'm going to be coaching. I coach every day after okay. school till. So I'll probably need that adjusted to back like an hour or something. The ending time, if that's okay. Sure. Um, if I'll you talk send to your me an, as well. Yeah, if you send me an email, say six days before the midterm, that's when I'll have gotten the AR information on accommodations. Um, okay. And then I'll just make that adjustment at that point. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Awesome. Awesome. <clears throat> Anybody else with questions before we call it a night? Awesome. All right. Well, I am going to let you guys go then. Like I said, the, the sort of lecture content for today is already posted on our e-class. This chapter is nice and short, so it should be good. Um, and then we'll get into sort of new stuff next week, a little bit less review. Um, oh, and I did see one more question there about suggestions for doing well in the course. Um, so other than the stuff uh, from the PowerPoint, um, I would also recommend staying on top of things um, with online courses at, with the flexibility it's easy to leave stuff last minute, I would definitely not do that if at all possible. Um, and then if you have questions, ask them early, because um, I do like to try and stay available as much as I can, but if you're emailing say the night before an exam, that's not the best time to be learning stuff. Um, so those are, I think, the two biggest problems that I have um, that students encounter, but um, we can always talk more specifics once you get into the class and start seeing what content works for you versus doesn't. Um, but yeah, awesome. I will leave you guys there. And like I said, I'm going to put the recording of this uh, up on our e-class once I've rendered and uploaded it. Um, so I will let you guys go and I will see whoever wants to be here next Thursday. Um, have a great night, everyone, and I'll see you later.